Hi there, Math 26 students. Continuing this little mini series, I'm trying. Um, this is going to be on chapter 15. Again, for chapter 15. Interrupting my own video here, I I want to comment that when I originally made this um, chapter 15 review, it was in a, a winter quarter where we had lost a couple extra days, and that quarter we did not include center of mass in the final. Center of mass typically is included in the final exam. For math 126 so I'm gonna try to insert this video clip to say don't ignore that topic ultimately center of mass is just you're given some region whatever it is um, I don't know I'll get make up some triangle here y equals 2x 4 so I just want to make sure nobody skips this you're given a region and you're given some density let's say the density is one of these I don't know this it might say that in words. So I would have this on my note sheet and I'd have this on my note sheet. And then everything else is straight computational. Meaning, if you wanna compute X bar, you're gonna do the double integral over this region of X times whatever the density is, which I said was just this. I'm just, the problem would tell you the density or it would say one of these phrases um, divided by the bottom, which actually is the total mass. And then for y bar, you would do the same thing. y, kx, da, double integral, kx, da. And whatever, you, whatever the density was, which like I said, is something they have to give you or say in words, goes in these spots. So I just wanna make sure it's clear that, you know, it is dependent on the given quarter. But if we're in a quarter where density is, with center of mass is a question we can ask, then you do need to know this. Don't ignore this. Uh, the part that has to do with setting up the integral. So in this case, if I did it in terms of x, let's say, then you would say 0 to 2, 2x two to 4. And then you would just be computing. Dy, you compute that. Be, that'd be a number. There would be a k out front. And then you compute this. Now, one small comment about this second one. No, I won't say any comment about it. Just compute, compute, divide, done. So you ultimately have three things to do. All right, that's more than enough. That's more than I needed to say. I just wanted to make sure that if this, if I use this video again in future quarters, center of mass is something we cover uh, typically on the final exam of Math 126. It's just the, when I first made this video, it was in a quarter where we didn't. Uh, include it. Okay, we're talking about double integrals. You know, we talked about this conceptual thing of how to set them up, but mostly it was about how to find bounds for a given region. So let's look at some old finals and see if we can find questions like that. So here's one right here from the winter 2022 final. Evaluate this double integral. So this is one that could be a straight evaluation, but I'm not sure how you're going to proceed because I don't know how to integrate this. So I would say your first thought on such a problem is to draw the region. So let's review how that goes. These you should think of as tick marks. They're telling you that y has to be between zero and two. And then based off of y, x is between the following two functions. This on the right, and this on the left. So you need to graph those. If it helps you, so there's x equals one. If it helps you, I would take this and rearrange it into a form that's more user-friendly. There's our region. Notice that this is on the right, this is on the left, there's my tick marks. The mistake students often do is they draw a horizontal line and they confuse which region is which. But now we can switch. So now I can say the integral from 0 to 1, uh, the integral from 0 to 2x of y cosine of x cubed minus 1 dy dx. And that's actually quite a bit easier to integrate because of that y instead of it being the x. So it's 0 to 1, 1 half y squared cosine of x cubed minus 1 evaluated from 0 to 2x dx, which is the integral from 0 to 1. Oh, this comes out to be 4, so it's just 2x squared cosine of x cubed minus 1 dx. And then that can be done with a substitution. 
preview to finish that. Okay, let's look at another one. Find the volume of the solid under this plane and above this region. So step one is you solve for your z's. Uh, so we have z equals 3x plus 2y, double integral, 3x plus 2y dA. And then you need to draw this region. So it's y equals x squared, x equals y squared. There's our region. They intersect right here at 1. You can find solve for the intersection. There's multiple ways to set this up. But if I was doing I probably would do 0 to 1. Let's use x. And then what's the bottom? So in terms of x, and what's the top? So x squared is on the bottom. The top is the square root of x. 3x plus 2y dy dx. And the rest is computation. You do have to practice computation. But there's the main idea. All right, let's look at the next one. Set up and evaluate a double integral and polar coordinates to calculate the area of the region between two polar curves. So step one, area of the region. Step two, it's going to be hard to graph this. That's part of, I think, what students get stuck on here is the challenge, because we're just trying to find these bounds. It says it's between these two polar curves. And so really the challenge of this question was to try to, in some way, get some sense of what's going on. So I think this is where my advice about plugging in and looking at the intercepts might help you if you really were stuck on this. Meaning if I plug in a zero, the first, there's two curves here. One, two, let's call this one. Let's call this two. When you plug in zero, this is six and this is three. That already is telling me a bit. This one's bigger. When you plug in pi over two. And so one thing I notice here, and this is, I guess maybe this is too much from experience, but I notice that this um, is gonna always be positive because, um, uh, because when you plug in these numbers, this is never gonna be bigger than our bigger or smaller than negative one and one. But I guess I just keep plugging in points. So if you plug in uh, sine of three pi over two, this would be a good time to have our unit circle. I get four uh, from the first one. And when I plug in, I get, so I get one. So the fact that sine is between negative one and one is helpful because I'm never gonna get negatives. That's the weird thing when you're graphing. But anyways. There's a one, there's a four. So I had somehow went like this. Not exactly, a, not exactly like that. When I plug in a pi, I get six and three. Okay, three and six, somehow it gets there. Somehow it doesn't matter exactly how it gets there. When I plug in three pi over two, it's nine pi. Okay, at, at some point here, I'm starting to get this sense that it's between these two things and neither one is ever gonna be negative and they never hit each other because of the value. So that was the challenge and the problem. Now, once we have that, we have a, a sense of what's going on. We need to go all the way around and the smaller one is three plus two sine of three theta and the bigger one is six plus two sine of three theta. Then it's one already already theta. And then you start integrating. There's no way around this part. One half r squared, three plus. So that was probably a little bit of a challenge for people to think through. Plug this in, plug this in, expand, integrate. Um, that's how that goes. So let's look at maybe fall 2021, looking for double integral questions. Um, there's a double integral question that looks scary. So this is probably about drawing the region. So it, the tick marks are zero to one. Here's zero, here's one. And then the functions are x equals zero and x equals arc cosine of y. You say, well, I don't know what arc cosine looks like. Well, let's rearrange it. It's this. 
So we're talking about the sine func the cosine function from zero to one. Now the cosine function starts up here at one and it comes down. The first time it crosses is at pi over two, which is bigger than one. So ultimately what's going on here? Let me just think for one second. I think I'm saying something silly. Let me erase before I draw that. Okay, so here's x, here's y. Here's the cosine function. y goes from 0 to 1. That's what I said that was silly. I caught myself there. So the, the tick marks were for y. Apologies if you're watching that. So 0 to 1, and now I'm going to draw the cosine graph. Looks like this. Keeps going. Um, but they're only going from 0 to 1 and out to arc cosine, so that's going to be here. Arc cosine is only defined to there. Okay. So I need this, I actually said it when I was trying to do it wrong. Um, so it's gonna be the integral from zero to pi over two, the integral from zero to cosine of sine of co of sine. Often these questions, your first thought might be, well, why is that any better? Well, because we're integrating with respect to y, so this is gonna be sine of sine of x times y evaluated from zero to cosine of x dx, and then it's zero to pi over two. And so then when you go to plug this in, it's gonna to lead to something where a substitution would work. So you can do u equals sine of x and you got it. Okay, so there's a couple examples of drawing the region. Okay, same story here. Um, these are the tick marks. So x is zero to one. These are the functions. Y equals the square root of two minus x squared and y equals x. So y equals x is a line, and that should be the lower bound. And this is a circle. It's actually a circle of radius square root of two. If you squared both sides and rearranged, it would look like this. Okay, there's our region. From zero to one, this needs to be on the bottom, that needs to be on the top. This would be much easier to do in polar because you could just say pi over four to pi over two and then you could say zero to root two. And then you could say e to the r squared, r dr d theta. And then do a substitution and you got it. We don't have center of mass on this test. Okay, I think that's enough. We've hit some of the highlights in terms of regions and setting things up. Hope that's sort of helpful.